Hello. I am sitting here in the greenhouse. Just got back from a little trip and took some plants home. The greenhouse is a really big mess. Need to clean it, but I noticed when watering today that I needed to really scrub out a couple layers or shelves in my indoor cabinet greenhouse. And I had a couple of you guys asking how I put that together or just showing interest in it in general. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna show you guys. So let's go clean it out and let me show you how I put it together. And I guess I can show you what I have growing in there now too. Let's go. Welcome to the living room. This is where I used to keep everything pretty much and before I got the greenhouse. Gotta show you guys this plant because it has grown so much. Philodendron pastas on them. It's like tied to the ceiling with strings because it's way grown outside of its pot. It's so pretty and cool. But it's getting a bit large, so we'll see what I, how I deal with this. For now, it's gonna stay right here. Maybe it will stay right there forever. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're talking about this. This was a cabinet that we actually got with the house when we bought it. It was full of whatever, junk kind of, but I quickly kind of decided that, you know what, this could be used for growing vegetables because I had, was starting a vegetable garden a couple of years ago and was so anxious to finally have a yard that I started growing the seeds inside early. But then I was going to disassemble it and decided, you know what, I should put my other plants in here. So I started doing that. I began by just putting them in with these lights. I'll link the what lights these are below. These, I, I don't know if you can find these outside of Sweden or outside of Scandinavia. They are by Nelson Garden. They're little LED strip lights. They're meant for growing. And the reason I like them so much is because they are clear and white, not purple. I don't really like the purple lights. I like to have a home with aesthetics that I also enjoy. So I haven't done any purple grow lights because I just think they are a little too ugly for me to enjoy day after day after day. So these are really awesome. I can highly recommend them. They have a really long lifetime. They do barely take any energy. And the cool thing about them is that they connect to each other. So this one is connected to this one below. So you can put, I think, up to three of them together at once. The only thing to keep in mind is that these little in-between connector cords are pretty short. That's probably 30 centimeters or so. So I, <laughs> this thing is like really, um, I got a bit creative, let's just say that. This is not like a normal functioning thing that's very beautiful. I had all kinds of strange things to make it work. One being, I actually tied these with staple and string to the ceiling everywhere. They actually come with little brackets, which you can use, but I didn't for some reason. I don't remember why, but I decided to use a string, which is just fine. It's held, it's solid, it's good, all fine. And another thing is that I, I haven't drilled any holes to get these cords out nicely so they kind of all just go out in the corners of the unit so that's something you need to think about if you have a reclaimed piece of furniture that you want to try to make into a greenhouse is that if you're going to put the whole shebang with lights and fans and heating pads in you need to make sure that you can get the cords out somehow then I also, not too long after, decided to put these fans in. You have to have airflow. As I mentioned before, airflow is like key to plant health when you put them in terrariums or, or um, greenhouses or anything like that. So I have two. These are actually, I'll link them below as well. These are USB connected like computer fans that you're supposed to use with, with on the computer. And they are also hanging upside down from the ceiling with string because I didn't know how else to mount them in here without taking up space. And this is just about enough air to move the leaves slightly and, and keep the mold and mildew 
away. You kind of have to finagle with stuff to get it to work. For example, when I close this, I have to push all the cables up into this corner, as mentioned. I could probably fasten them up here somehow, um, but I, you know, I just I haven't done that. It can close, and then it goes down here, and you can see I had to get a little converter so that the USBs could plug into a normal cable. And then I also have a whole box up here full of all the other cables with the lights and the lights that are throughout here as well. It's my little connector box. And that is not all. I also have down here a heating pad underneath. I only have a heating pad on the bottom one because it actually, since this is a little bit taller, it keeps it warm in here. But since these are shorter, these actually stay pretty warm with just lights. So I didn't feel the need to put heating pads in here. So I cleaned this bottom one out a couple weeks back, totally scrubbed it all, treated all the plants, everything like that. But I didn't do these two. So I'm not going to take everything out of there again, just because it's a bit easier for me. But it's maybe more fun anyway for you guys to look at these while I'm blabbing. Um, but I'm going to put this, these two levels back today. Right now, I already took everything out of here, and I'm going to reorganize it and put it back. And then one last step for this is that since this is made of wood, and I, you know, have lots of water in here. I had to protect this wood a little bit, not so much that because I really love the look of it, but because I don't want it to rot. So what I use is actually, I took a large trash bag, like the thick heavy duty ones, and cut them, cut out pieces that were just, just to fit here, like this. So that the water can fall onto that and keep away the rot from the wood and this actually works really well i wasn't sure at first you know if water would get underneath but it doesn't because of the way that i water which i will show you so i mentioned that i was treating the plants in here and i figured i should tell you with what and why this is what i use for pretty much all of my plants when it comes to care these are little granules that you put in the soil which works into the plant through the roots and up for bugs like thrips and things like that or it actually works for quite a few insects but this is really important because many insects like thrips as mentioned actually get inside the plant and this is an extra step to make sure that it takes care of the larva stage inside the plant the things you can't spray from the outside and this is neem oil this is my favorite thing to use on plants when working against bugs and fungus and things like that because it has such a minimal impact on the environment in comparison to other things you can find on the market. It works quite well. The only thing is that it, since it is a bit weaker in comparison to the other direct insect killers, you have to apply it often. So what I do actually is I mix this extract up with water. Usually on the back of the container it says how much and then I spray the plant and then about 30 seconds later I rub it in and instantly wash it off with water. And the reason I do that is because some plants are very sensitive to this. Some philodendrons, anthuriums, calatheas, many plants are sensitive to this. So if you just spray and leave it on, you may see strange things happen to your plant, irritated leaves, things like that. And then you get that disappointment of, oh my gosh, what happened kind of thing. So I like to take caution and just try to smother the leaves and then wash it off. So anything that may be there that I see or don't see just has a wash through and same with the fungus too or if you have any sort of disease going on that helps. So I highly recommend these two. I like them a lot. This one I do just routinely every couple of months on my plants like when I'm cleaning out greenhouse and stuff like this and these ones I do every couple of months as well. Just one pin per pot usually and then it will slowly disintegrate and get into the plant. And oftentimes these actually have a little bit of fertilizer in them as well, which is nice because I don't do a lot of fertilizing on my plants actually. So it's nice that this gives a little bit to the plants. So this is product that I can recommend to you. I'll put it in the link below. 
So the majority of what I grow down here is actually slightly taller philodendrons that I don't have room for in my shorter, smaller greenhouse and things that don't want to stay super, super, super humid. Like in the greenhouse, in the greenhouse, I pump up the humidity so that it's just rolling down the walls for, for the beginning of its uh, time with me. But in here, many of these philodendrons, I find that they don't want that much humidity and you'll find kind of like a swelling on the leaves if it's too humid. So this is more appropriate for them. So this is where I keep a lot of the things. And what you see I have growing right now is like some philodendron glorious, some Milano chrysum. I have some, I actually got my hands on some Monstera Thai constellation in here. Um, some philodendron Milano chrysum again. What else do I got? Oh, it's a Hoya. This one I move around a lot. I'm trying, I'm testing it to see exactly how it's happy and it seems pretty, pretty happy in here as well. Some Syngonium variegated. Oh, here's something I want to show you guys as well, which I have from time to time. Not all the time, but I like, I like when I can find it. The variegated alocasia. This new leaf just came out. It's really pretty. That's pretty nice. So all these plants in here have been in here for a little while and they all just do really well in here. There's a serpents, really cool plant. I have a lot of little bundles of plastic with moss in it in here too, because everything is under propagation. So this is moss wrapped around the stems so that I can encourage roots to grow before I propagate it because I don't want to risk losing the leaves on these when I cut it. It's a lot easier to propagate plants and not lose the leaves if you do it this way so that you get roots started like here. You see the roots already coming through. So when I cut this now, I can put this either straight into sphagnum moss a little bit more to encourage it or I can put it straight into soil without having to let it set in water or watching the leaves droop and all of that. So I like doing things that way. It's like an extra security insurance for me to know that I'm not going to lose these plants. Oh, this is a Caladium Thai Beauty. It gets pink. It's really cool. But it seems to start white and then fades to pink. I'll have some of these this year. And all of these I will have for sale when they are to my standard. <laughs> you could say. All right, so let's fill this thing back up. Okay, check out these cuties. Here we have a whole tray of Cebu Blue. They are growing quite well. Took a lot of cuttings earlier this season and they're just filling in really nice. So I expect in the next month or so of them to, to be in a good spot. These are Diosauria this color. They do really well. I'm keeping them in here to hopefully keep them from being dormant. And when you put them in this really bright, high intensity light here, they get really, really nice color. This is a Scandapsis dark form. It's really cool. It's like the leaves are almost like black. This light's really high intensity, so they look maybe a bit off, but they are, they're really, really neat. This is my unique way of trying to propagate them by the plant is planted in soil, sphagnum moss around, and then I just kind of wrapped it like this to keep it really humid and moist around the stems to encourage the growth on the stems so I can easily cut it later. And I actually keep my propagation tray in here too. And it goes really well. So here you see I have some more of the dark form rooting in. I have some Philodendron Rio rooting in, more Cebu Blue. Some Gloriosum stems I threw in here. It's 
kind of a surprise. I, I wish that I would do a better job at labeling when I have stems, but I, it's kind of a fun surprise as well when I just throw it in, in this thing and see what I get. It's really fun. Oh, there's a little brandy in there too. So I put this in here. It's only sphagnum moss, like so. And I actually cover this as well with a little bit of plastic foil. You just let it sit on top of the leaves like this. And I do spray inside of there and open this up from time to time to get a little bit of airflow. Jewel orchids, super fun. I love these. I'll have some again soon. So that is one layer here. It's about enough to fit. There's a little bit more space here and usually I have this thing packed, like totally packed because everything does so well in here. So here you kind of get an idea of what kind of plants do pretty well in this kind of an environment. And I will show you how I water them now. So I have this spray bottle here. It's quite large. It holds two liters of water. And pretty much the only way that I water these is like this. Just go through and spray the water into each pot that I feel needs water. And that's about it. I do that whenever I see the soil dry on the in here. I kind of just can tell when it needs to be watered. I would say it's maybe a, a couple times a week because these are all in such small pots. They dry up kind of easily. And I also am not watering them a whole lot. I'm just spraying them with this, which doesn't completely saturate the soil. So it's a little bit hard to say exactly how often I do it but this is how I do it anyway, and it works It works quite well. Okay, here we go, top layer. So I normally, like I mentioned, keep a lot of aeroids in here, but I do keep a, a couple of other plants in here that need just a little bit more concentrated light. One of those uh, is this one. Do you recognize it? This is a Ficus elastica shiveriana. There we go. So I have a couple of them that I am working on propagating and hopefully hopefully sometime soon I can start releasing those. They are really cool. They get like a reddish color when they first come out and then it fades to like a lime green. They're really pretty. But what I have noticed for those of you who have these and if you say, what the heck, my coloration on this is really bad. The high intensity light brings out the reddish color and just really makes the plant look really really beautiful. I had this growing just in a windowsill at the beginning of when I owned it and it kind of got really dull and didn't didn't look as nice as it does now but yeah cool plant working on propagating it we'll see when I start letting some of them go. Here's a really cool and this is Syngonium 3 Kings however it totally turned white on me and normally they have a bit more greenish in it like this and there's a leaf I'm just gonna have to remove, but it's it started getting these really pretty pearly white leaves, so that was cool. And that's the fun thing about variegated plants. They're so random with what you get. Like, it's a surprise every time, and I think that's why they're so exciting. Aglionema Pictum Tricolor, very ugly right now. I cut this one for propagation, and the new leaves that are coming out have very little color, so we're gonna have to wait a little while until that one gets that really beautiful camo color again. I also keep a couple of begonias in here. They seem to like it, so there they will stay. Couple of philodendron hybrids. Something I know you guys love. Florida ghost, which lost its color, but it has these growth points coming out of it, several of them. 
which I don't see very often on philodendrons, getting several growth points. And I didn't put any hormones or anything on this. It's just doing its thing. So we'll see what it does. A very exciting philodendron. Anthurium seedlings. Here's something I love. This is a platycerium that I grew from spore, but this is not just your average platycerium. I believe this is an, a platycerium ridleyi. We've had a little bit of a hard time getting to know each other. As you can see, I've overwatered it a couple of times. I actually have two of them, and one's looking a lot worse, but there is life left in it. So I think I'm going to have to repot these, remount these soon. These have been with me for quite a while. They do pretty well in here. They seem to like airflow, so this is the place to be. I also keep a tray in here for some plants that I like to keep a little bit more moisture around so the water can fall into the tray and stay a little while longer and create even more humidity in this shelving unit for the plant. Some more begonias. Philodendron pseudovaricosum. Syngodium modeled cuttings. A couple more. These are so cool. Here's a tiny little Florida ghost. It kind of died back. You can see the old leaf on it. Got really stressed, died back, and sprouted again. And all the small leaves are like white. Super cute. A couple more hybrids. So it's the same thing with these. I just take my spray bottle and go through one at a time, watering them, making sure the moss on the top is wet throughout the whole thing. And the same down here. I do water these the same way, just like so, making sure to get water inside these little propagation plastic. And then just on the bottom one here, mainly, sometimes on the other ones too. When I'm up done for the day, I spray a little bit like this. I generally am not a sprayer. I began thinking that spraying is good for humidity. I don't really think it is anymore. It just seems to cause disease spread in areas that don't have enough humidity. If you have a dry home, for example, and you spray the leaves, I don't, I don't know if it does that much. It's a debate that I'm still kind of deciding. However, I do it in here because as soon as I turn this fan on, it pretty much dries it all up. So it kind of keeps the leaves clean and just gives them a little bit more freshness, at least in my mind. Okay, so now it's time to close it up. Just always got to make sure I'm not squishing any of the leaves too bad because I fill it so full. Looks good. And this is the tricky side because I have the cords. And I also need to turn my fans back on. So on, on, pull the cords up into the corner. This is a trick so that you, it doesn't make a sound either. <laughs> Give it a little slack, like so. And we have our cabinet. That's what I do. I don't go in there and turn everything off manually like that every day. No way. It's all controlled. Actually, the whole room is. So, good night or good morning. Pretty fun. So, yeah, here's a little idea for you guys. If you have extra furniture around and feel like making a little glass box for your plants, I've seen some that are way prettier than this. This is pretty ugly, but it works and it is it is pretty nice. We'll see. I, I planned on taking it out of the, the living room once I got the greenhouse, but I might leave it in here because what else am I going to do with this space? Just fill it with other plants probably. So that's that. And there's one more growing area in the home that I use, which I'll save for another video. I've talked about enough today, but this tower is another spot. I also put up this emergency greenhouse in the greenhouse and I will show you what I got. Voila! Maybe show you more of that another time. They're all in Little Recovery Hospital right now so that we don't lose any leaves.
Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for following along as I cleaned out my glass cabinet. I hope you guys are able to get creative and use some of the furniture you have around, or if you already have, show me. I'd love to see what your setup. It's cool to reuse things and try to make things work without getting tons of high-tech equipment. A lot of the times things work way better than you would think, and testing is the only way to do it. I'm gonna get in here now and clean up. It's a mess. Plants are everywhere. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks a lot, and I'll see you again soon for, for something new.